Lorraine should be able to see me also. Yes, I'm seeing you, yeah. All right. So, um, the science is, all right, so just the thing, so right here, you know that the liver and the spleen, you're talking about over 500 functions in the body, in particular the liver, all right? Um, the spleen produces um, the blood supply for the body, all right? It helps with the blood supply in the body. The liver helps with the detoxification of the body. You take R off of liver and you have to raise legs. So this is the important part, all right? The liver is... I didn't know my information. All right. Um, so you want to be able to drop your head back. So like this, breathe in. Okay, so what that does is help the liver detoxify the body. This is the benefit of being able to breathe in and then exhale strongly. These are the keys, all right? Aileen, uh, yes. do you want me to put the, uh, the video on as well? or? Um, yes, if you want to record, I'm already recording on my end. Okay. And I can send you the recording. Please. Or you can go into, um, the after class and get the recording. Okay. Thank you. All right. Can you see me well enough? Oh, yeah, I'm seeing you. Okay. All right. Um, the next one helps to benefit the heart. This is done one to three times because it's highly concentrated. Um, you want to close your right nostril, breathe through your left nostril, close both nostrils, and then open your right nostril halfway, and then breathe out slowly. Okay. So let's game. Close right nostril. Breathe in through the left nostril. Close both nostrils. Then breathe out halfway. Open your nostril halfway to the right nostril and breathe out slowly. Okay. Okay, that helps to cleanse the heart. That's the heart breath. So we did the liver, the spleen, and now the heart. We move on to the thyroid and parathyroid glands, which sits right here under the neck area. It helps with producing thyroxine, which is one of the um, hormones in which that is produced from the thyroid gland, which helps to break down and build up tissue. 
It also controls calcium in the body, so it helps to decalcify the pineal gland and different other glands in the body to keep them functional and keep them in a harmonious balance, as well as also it helps with sex function. But once again, you want to sit straight up, and you want to do the exact same thing that we just did with the heart, except this time we alternate the nostrils. Yeah, you alternate between the nostrils. And when I let it go, through the nostrils, right? Right. Not through the mouth, through the nostrils. Okay. Everything's through the nostrils. And what this does is activate the Ida and the Pingala, which is known as your um, sacral nerves, that expand from up from your um, sacrum, which is at the base of the spine. These two nerves crisscross each other up along the chakras and spinal column up to the nostrils. The right nostril is for the pingala and the left nostril is for the ear. All right? 
Next, we're going to do the lungs. Let's get rid of the spell air in the lungs. We're going to close the right nostril with the right thumb. Take a deep breath in through the left nostril. And close both nostrils, expelling out through the mouth with the ha sound. So it's like this. And then alternate. Now we go to deep abdominal breathing, which is called dainty and breathing. As with the others, we want to sit with our spine straight, relax. You can now take both hands, in particular, normally for the male, the left hand is over top of the right hand at the navel chakra. All right? Right at the belly button. All right? And what you want to do is breathe in and out through your nose, inhale, and now visualize a golden ball of energy like a small sun growing in your lower dance end. As you exhale, visualize the golden ball intensifying its glow. With each breath, see the light growing brighter and brighter. All right? You're not going to do this the whole 36 times. You're going to do this 12 times. Um, but you can practice on your own for three to five minutes. Ten minutes is ideal. Throughout the day, you want to take one or two dantian breaths to your charge your internal system. So this, what this does is help you to um, regenerate, or rejuvenate. All right? So this is what you're going to do. You're going to breathe in, and you're going to breathe down to your belly button or right below it, 
unless it normally is about an inch right below it, two inches right behind the belly button area. All right? You will see this golden ball of light like a small sun growing in the belly. So let's begin 12 times.
okay. What happens is that when you store energy there in the lower density end, that gives you the ability in order to become what is called immortal. In other words, you expand and extend your life force. In other words, you can grow old gracefully and you can live for a longer period of time because that area is where the energy is in which that formed your body into existence from your mother and father. So what you're doing is adding additional energy in which that you basically is extracting prana or chi or key energy from oxygen and store that energy there. All right? Um, that energy between your mother and father which that formed you into physical existence is essentially known as your ancestral energy. So you're a concentration of seven generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's side. So 14 generations, you're a concentration of these are symbolic to the 14 pieces in which that Osiris or all soul was cut up into. All right? So essentially what you're doing by concentrate, concentrating the energy there, or combining once again those 13 entities, being, ancestors, into one being, which is you, becoming all soul, Osiris. This is the key. This is not told to the people who practice these exercises. We don't know why they're doing it, it's just they're doing it. All right? So, um, this is how we have to um, continue these particular studies. All right, so um, I'm going to go out of this one and we're going to continue on. Great question, Aline. Yes. Uh, Don So, left side, over to the right side, the right. I can't hear you. Oh, the Don Teen. Your left it side, in. Uh -huh. position with ends, right, for the energy. So you were saying the left side, over the right, over left hand, over the right hand. Yes, for the male is the left hand over the right hand. For the women is the right hand over the left hand. Mm, okay. Now, of course, you might feel uh, more comfortable doing um, doing the uh, right hand over the left hand. You know, but normally. I mean, Qigong is the right hand over the left hand um, for the males and vice versa for the females. Okay. All right, so Qigong, sexual energy, and the quest for the Holy Spirit. All right, now, we get to the signs of Qigong because we just went through the Nai Gong, the Ni Gong, and um, we know that Qigong is an ancient Chinese system. Um, of energy cultivation, which enabled one to develop internal power. This is what we did with the Nai Gong. All right? Now, Chinese system, yes, 2,000 years later, 2,000 years before the Chinese system, we was already practicing in Africa Qigong, or what is now called Qigong or Tai Chi. We was already practicing these um, energy modalities as well as also through dance. All right, when you see Akhenaten holding his hands like this, him and Nefertiti, that is the Qigong position. This is the receiving energy from the cosmos, from the sun. Solar static energy is going into the center of the palms, in which that is rejuvenating the healer and making their um, power stronger by absorption of this particular sun or solar energy. Right? So this is the same source of power behind the Chinese internal martial arts. You look to Africa or look at Egypt in particular, and you will see the practice of these particular same um, system 2,000 years before um, Chinese system in martial arts. Right? Matter of fact, um, Amenhotep, um, which is from the 12th dynastic period, the beginning of it, what happened is, is that we're talking and looking at the fact of how 
um, on the temple walls in ancient Kemet. You're talking about now um, the 12th dynastic period. You're talking about over 4,000 years ago. On the walls of Egypt, you will see the martial arts. Nashua Kwesi has shown this uh, many times in his um, presentations going to Africa and going to those particular metrometer or hieroglyphics in which that we have on the walls of our demonstrations of what looks like basically Wing Chun, which look like grappling. So we're talking about um, Aikido, Judo. We're talking about um, um, grappling, more even more grappling moves. We're talking about even within wrestling. We see archery. We see long pole stick fighting. We see all of these things, and it's right on the walls of ancient Egypt 4,000 years ago. And the Chinese only had our system for 2,000 years. And of course, they parlayed it into a Chinese system, which is fine because they have preserved that information for us now to come forth and uh, receive it once again. But martial arts did not start there. Uh, we have... Um, a Korean grand master who wrote the book Karate in which that he shows in that particular book and this is a Korean and he writes that martial arts started in Africa and he shows um, the temple walls right there so this is what we do know I did a video on this information about the um, origin of martial arts of Kung Fu and Karate um, you can go and look that up, right? So this is the same power of the, behind the Chinese internal martial arts, and without which the movements in this art will only be calisthenics and be aerobics, right? This is um, without the breathing exercises, it's calisthenics. That's aerobics, all right? So we know that they don't utilize the breathing methods that they do within Tai Chi and Qigong. So this is nothing more than aerobics, and basically what they do is hyperventilate themselves, if you ever notice. Right? They, <laughs> they're breathing all hard, and that's hyperventilating yourself. That is not um, the Qigong, Tai Chi, Taoist way, or methods of the art of breathing, the science of breathing coming from the yogi um, or the Sanskrit teachings. That is not... The science. So for centuries, Qigong has been used for health, vitality, increased longevity, transforming martial arts and athletic ability and accelerating the mind. All right? There's a particular technique called the tidal wave Qigong, the type of Qigong practice in the temple styles Tai Chi, is a complete system of Qigong um, based Practice based on all four of the essential elements. So we talk about um, earth, air, water, and fire. Within our system, of course, you add wood and metal within the Oriental. All right? Um, of course, the fusion of these five brings forth what we refer to as the avatar. Um, later on, um, of course, we have it within our occult system as ether, akasha. All right? This is what melanin is. Is the combination of all these elements in physical form, all right? So melanin is the um, physical soul, all right, of the spiritual essence, all right? The spiritual essence is our soul. Melanin is the physical representation of our soul in human or physical form, all right? So our melanin is soul also. All right. This is the science of being able to transform your body into light. This, this is the key. Being able to transform your body into light. This is what we really want. All right. So, um, when these four essential elements combine, um, it becomes a you to another. It takes you to another level. All right. This is the internal power work, mainly called convincing, macrocosmic circulation, microcosmic circulation, and then projecting technique. Right? These are the four in which that utilizes the four essential elements of the internal um, powers. Like we said, 
um, earth, air, water, fire, and you add metal as well as also wood to the Orientals. All right, on um, because they have wind. All right, and they have water. <laughs> all right, then you have metal and wood, and these four correlates to the um, higher aspect, which is what we call, you know, cult, like I said, is ether or akasha or akashi. All right, so. Sorry, brother. My my children are here. I'm just gonna. Yeah, I understand. I got you. Peace, God. All right, all right, no doubt. Peace. Yeah. Okay, okay. So in Qigong, the mind is focused on directing the energy, not on thinking or not thinking. The principle is called Sin Qi, meaning... Wherever the mind goes, the energy follows. All right? So it's Sin Chi. Sin Chi. What you want to do is focus on where in your body where you want to store and put the energy and utilize that energy to heal a particular aspect of yourself. Whether it's an old injury to the knees, to the elbow, or even to your various organs. You want to be able to breathe in and move the energy to that particular organ. This is Sen Chi. All right? That's Sen Chi. That's what you want to be able to move the energy. So in Qigong, they're not visualizing, per se, the energy condensing, circular, projecting um, through the use of images. You're actually doing it physically, right? So you breathing in, and you're moving that energy to a particular location, you're doing that physically, right? And your mind, brain, particularly produces a chemical in which that corresponds with that movement of that energy. It's conscious directing in the use of that energy. So the energy transform in Qigong exists in three states, just like water, Water can be frozen and become ice. It can be heated up to become steam. Right? This first state is called Qi. Chinese Taoists believe that there was a single external power that moves the universe. And they call it Qi. The Vedic, the Sanskrit teachers, they refer to it as Prana. The ancient Egyptians refer to it as Ra. All right? So in the Chinese, the word for several meanings, it can mean air. Thank you. Got it. it can mean air, power, motion, or life. It's the intricate energy. Everyone possess it. We call it spirit. All right? Gotcha. All right? We call it spirit. So accumulating or circulating a large amount of chi by itself, however, will not produce great benefits. Just like gasoline in the motor, the chi must be condensed and burned to produce power. So what we just did, we took the energy and we stored it. We condensed it. Now we have to produce the power. All right? So now you know how to store the energy. And where to store the energy at, there's three places that you can store energy in your body. There's, a, there's more, but the, those are minor. These are the major places. The navel, or right below your navel, call your lower dantian. Your heart, in particular, you will store it at the back until the, in order to expand the front of the chest in which that would um, feel like um, your chest is being ripped open. Actually, the energy is being stored there, the chi, all right? And then your third eye, crown chakra, you can store the energy there. So these are the three main places of storage of energy. At your lower dantian, you produce immortality, longevity. At your heart chakra, you produce love, mercy, right. At your third eye chakra, you enhance your IQ, your vision, your photographic memory. 
This is why you restore the energy in these particular places. With the storage of these energies, you want to be able to move that energy throughout the body after you store it in these places. All right, so this the name of this internal power is Jin. It's the second state of energy transform in a complete system of Qigong. When Qi is converted into Jin, it is the same as converting your internal power or energy into your internal power. Once again, it's converting your internal energy into your internal power. This is what Bruce, Bruce Lee told you with the one inch punch technique. Alright? We'll see here with the one punch technique. Alright? And the person goes falling over. That is transferring, converting your internal energy into your internal power. So Qi is the energy source. Jin is the power. And Qi Gong is the method of transformation. Alright? I'm going to say that again. She is the energy source. Yin is the power. Qi Gong is the method of transformation. Now, there's a higher state than Qi and Jin. It's called Shin. S-H-E-N. And within the Orient, Shin is stored here. So, Qi is here at the Dantian. Jin is here at the heart. And Shin is here at the third eye, crown chakra area. All right? So those are the three treasures, or the three areas where you store this energy at. Once again, longevity at the lower dantian, mid dantian, love, um, um, compassion, uh, what is also referred to as unconditional love. Um, then third eye um, is high IQ, photographic memory, uh, matter of fact, just enhancing of the memory, um, RNA, DNA, um, out of body experience, lucid dreams, etc., etc. They give you these particular abilities. So, I showed you the various breathing techniques for the heart, the liver, the spleen, the thyroid, parathyroid glands, and the lungs. Now this is breathing is the foundation for healing energy, right? The longer exhale triggers the vagus nerve, which is the longest nerve from out of the 12 pericranial nerves that comes down along the chakra lines, all right, into your abdominal area, in which that gives you what is known as your abdominal brain. So you just don't have a brain here, which is part of the what is called the Reptilian or all complex part of the brain. You have the limbic part of the brain. You have the cerebrum part of the brain. And you have the cerebellum part of the brain. All right? In which that you have your, your neocortex, frontal lobes. All right? Now, you have also your heart, which you also have um, emotional, mental, neurons in it just like your brain as well as your abdominal area has neurons just like in your brain so this is why when you feel nervous you have butterflies in your stomach or abdomen area not in your brain so you don't feel the stress in your brain you feel it in your abdominal area because you have neurons brain neurons all right um or what is known this is where your instinct is derived from, all right? Your intuition is derived from here, all right? Your instincts, your animal nature is here at the abdominal area, all right? Once again, your intuition is from the brain area. Both of them can save your life, all right? Both of them can save your life. So, we're looking now um, at this is an important part of the system that relaxes the body by activation of the vagus nerve, which is um, linked to the parasympathetic nervous system. So, we would close our eyes, place our hands over the heart chakra, right? You can place your hands 
like this over your heart chakra. All right. Breathe rapidly in and out of your mouth for about 20 seconds. Must be audible. This is called bellow breath or what is it, hyper light, um, hyper, um, you call it hyper ventilation breath. All right. Bellow breath or um, fast breath. All right. So. And now breathe normally. Keep your attention on your breath. Now you can repeat that again two or three times. Now we're going to do what's called altered state of consciousness. We're going to envision a white light coming through the top of the head, down the body, into your hand. This will activate the palm and finger chakras. Right through thought, generate the flow of this energy and project it to yourself or to someone else. All right? In Qigong or Pranayama, the breath is retained for additional benefit. So this here shows you healing maintenance, six to ten repetitions, two to three sessions per day. Health enhancement, six to ten repetitions for the six sessions per day. Disease intervention, start slowly and build up to 15 to 20 repetitions, 10 to 15 sessions per day. We have started two to three repetitions once to twice per day, all right? And of course, you can do um, you can do what is called pranic breathing, in which that you can breathe in for six seconds, hold it for three, breathe out for six seconds, hold it for three. Or you can do seven, one, seven, one. Breathe in for seven seconds, hold it for one second, breathe out for seven seconds, Hold it for one second. Or you can do empty retention, in which that you breathe in and you hold it for one second. Without, hold it for one second. There's no particular number in which that you have to do. You would do this, as it says here, six to ten repetitions. In particular, when you do one of the clinic breathing techniques, actually you can do it 100 times. And you can do that twice a day. All right? If you need more, then you can go up to four times a day. And if you need more, 
cause of dis-ease intervention, and you can go up to 10 times a day or more, as you see here. So um, we want to do 6363. So take our hands, we're going to put it into a fist and place on top of our knees. Our fist on top of our knees, and then you want to make sure that your tongue is right at the top behind your two front teeth. And you want to have your fist rolled up. So we're going to do six, three, six, three. We're going to breathe in for six seconds, hold it for three, breathe out for six, hold it for three. And we're going to do this, um, we're going to do this probably about maybe, um, let's say we do it um, ten times according to this list here. All right? Let's begin.
Okay. If you do that, once again, ten times, two to three times a day, just for health maintenance. If there's something wrong, then you do it four to six times a day. All right. Um, to enhance, same number, six to ten times repetition. And then you can go to 20 repetition, 10 to 15 sessions of times a day if there's um, disease or this that you need to conquer. All right, so once again, you want to use the pranic breathing technique, 6363 or 7171 or empty retention breath. Whichever one in which that you choose, practice these techniques because what happens is that Large amounts of prana, chi, chi energy comes into your auric field and enters into your chakra system. And it helps to balance harmonially your endocrine gland. So, Ali. Yes. Breathing, six seconds. Holding up, three seconds. Right. Breathing again, six seconds. Holding right. Up, three seconds. Holding right. Up. And do right and start it over. Do it again for ten more to twenty. Um, like we said, idealistically, you can do it one hundred times a day, twice a day. And right. So in the morning, oh. it take you about twenty minutes to um do the whole thing, and then later on in the evening, you can do another twenty minutes. Gotcha. So technically, whenever the the plant I'm going through, I'm only doing one breathing out, right? Say it again. Okay, so six three six three, right? So right, you only doing one of the three, whichever one that you choose or which that you feel comfortable with. All right, so I'm breathing. I'm breathing six seconds. Right, hold six it seconds. Up. Hold it three seconds. Breathe out six seconds. Hold it three seconds. And start it over again and keep doing it until you reach the number 10, 20, or to 100, depending on how you want to do it. Got you now. All right. But like we said, for this ease, intervention is um, 20 times repetition, 15 to 20 times repetition, and you can do that 10 times to 15 times out the day. If you did it 100 times in the morning, and you did it 100 times again at night, then um, that would probably be good as far as disease intervention. Because so much prana will enter into the body. All right. All right? So I was talking about the shin um, energy. All right, the concept that allows you to transform internal energy into internal power is called the condensing principle. It's the single most important element of Qigong. Without practicing condensing, there would be no alchemical agent or essence to be circulated. Through condensing techniques, you draw energy into every cell of your body and condense it down tighter and tighter to fit into less and less space. Remember, 99.99999% of your atomic structure is empty space. And conditioning it down tighter and tighter, send it to less and less space. The denser you become, the more powerful your internal vacuum becomes. The more explosive your internal power will be. Using condensing techniques, you fit 18 inches of internal movement into one inch of space. The resulting transformation changes the vibratory frequency of the chi into jin, and the energy is now ready to be used. After condensing the energy, the next process is to circulate it through a series of chi circulations utilizing the macrocosmic principle. And in this manner, you can learn to open and close various doorways in your body in order to 
create pathways for the flow of energy. These pathways are not already in existence, like um, acupuncture, acupressure, meridians. You must create and burn through these, all right? They're called your meridians. You have six meridians on your left side, six meridians on your right side, and then in the center you have two, which give you 14 meridians. The two most important ones is what is called the um, conceptual vessel and your governing vessel, all right, or meridian. You have your governing meridian and your functional meridian, which is called your conceptual meridian. Right. It comes up from your perineum, up the back of the spine, to the top of the head, down to the nose. That is called your governing meridian or vessel or channel. From your nose down the front back to the perineum is called your conceptual or functional meridian or, meridian or pathway. All right? So, this is what we are trying to activate, and by doing so, activating these two areas produces what we refer to as chi energy. All right? And this chi energy moves through these particular pathways and burns through them. So it makes it easy for you to take the energy which that you have accumulated and move it through these particular channels. Mm. That's the key. So the flow of energy through these pathways connect every cell with every other cell. The result is that you can move the energy to where it's needed. As the torso and extremities become a single unit, so you're no longer separate, you can actually feel the energy moving through the body as you create these pathways through the internal um, chakra system, what is called also your chi or pranic system. All right? So, all right, this is a method. In which that you will stand upright, relax with your feet fairly close, place one hand on the middle uh, floor, which is, all right, you come down to basically two inches below the navel or so, all right, um, place your hands over it, your mouth slightly uh, um, open, dispel all irrelevant thoughts. It is important to have an empty heart throughout this exercise. Right, so this now gives us the third stage in the Qigong process using the microcosmic principle. Now, you want to know more about the macrocosmic principle and the microcosmic principle, look up Man Tat Chia. Man Tat Chia. All right, he goes into depth about this information. All right, most of his books goes into this information. Awakening. The Tao is probably um, is one of his first books in which he goes into that information. Utilizing this principle, you learn how to take the energy that you have accumulated and circulated in the internal pathways through the central channel of your spinal cord. In other words, your governing vessel. This raises the amount of energy that your central nervous system can carry. The last stage of Qigong is to apply the projecting principle. This is um, your ability in order to transfer energy into other people. You can learn that method through Reiki. You can learn that method through pranic healing. All right? The Qi Gong and the Tai Chi helps to intensify your abilities as being a pranic healer, as being a Reiki practitioner. So this last stage of Qigong is basically is to apply the projecting principle. This is the way in which that you learn to extend your mind and energy outside the confines of your physical body. It allows you to influence your environment in a positive way. The final result is an evolution of your shin, your spiritual essence. As we said, it's no coincidence that the Orient utilized the word shin as spirit. 
But this word Shin comes right out of Africa, right out of Egypt. So this is how we know that the Asians or Orientals, um, the Chinese in particular, then the Japanese, that used the um, word Shin, it came from Africa. Because Egyptology, Kemetology, Timorian information is older than Chinese philosophy. And they use Shin also. But this is how we know that Shin, your spiritual essence, completing the spiritual transformation, this energy transformation, is necessary, as we said, there's three treasures. We come out the Shin, the prenatal. This is also what we call the ancestral energy, your prenatal essence, your vitality, your procreative energy. Then you have your Chi, which is universal life force that surrounds and permeates and binds everything. This helps you to talk to each cell in your body as you are made up of 76 to 100 billion cells. Trillion, excuse me, trillion cells. Six, 76 trillion to 100 trillion cells. Then you have Shin, the spirit that has the potential to become immortal. This is what we're talking about. So transferring the energy as we said, from the Jin to the Chi to the Shin. Now, this is what they refer to as the three treasures. Now, we refer to as the universal life force energy that surrounds and permeates and binds everything is at the navel chakra, the Shin, or the prenatal um, um, essence, vitality, procreative energy. Um, they say is at the navel chakra um, area, right below the navel chakra, about one to two inches below. The chi energy, as I was getting ready to say, is at the heart chakra that permeates and bonds everything. Then you have the shin energy, which is here at the third eye area, the crown chakra, in which that, that gives you the ability to become immortal. This is the energy in which that, once you master these three cycles, or three treasures, the lower dantian, the mid dantian, and the upper dantian, which is called the upper room. This is your personal heaven. Once you master it, this is when you can develop the golden dragon body, which becomes the immortal body. This is the halo in which that is shown of those who become immortal and have life after death. They, they have their consciousness with them from their last previous life or last lives, which is their connection to what is called the oversoul. All right? Those who have not mastered these techniques then they do not have these particular, um, um, we talk about those who don't have this consciousness. Um, they are just walking around aimlessly on earth or on the etheric astral plane, not knowing anything of what is going on. Because they haven't mastered these particular concentrated um, immortal techniques. So these are the keys, all right, to gathering immortal um, um, science here. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. I... Okay. All right. So here we have the Qigong training process. You have convert the Jin into Qi, nurture the Shin with Qi, we find the shin into nothingness, which is called Wu Chi, and then crush the nothingness, which is called Wu Chi. The refinement process can be thought of as exchange of one's material and emotional desires for the conception of a holy child, which is one's spirit. This is the birth of one's correctness. As this correctness is maintained, the spirit grows closer to its source, heaven. So, you are producing a baby called the golden dragon body or the golden dragon. This is your baby. This is called Heru within the ancient Kemetic text. This is called Buddha within the Zen or the Buddha philosophy. Buddhism philosophy. All right? Um, this is Christ which is spoken about within Christianity, all right? This is called the Mati, 
which is spoken of within Islam. Salam. All right? This is the Shekinah that is spoken of within the Kabbalistic teaching. All right? So, filling the chi. All right? This is the science of filling the chi. Or the uh, vertical cushion of energy. Give one's belief in the unseen energy force. The more one feels the chi, the more one can learn about what to do with it. When the chi is felt, one um, may feel a peaceful, warm, or cool, or electrical tingling sensation. Usually the tingling begins in the fingertips and the joints, the tip of the fingers and toes, the soles of the feet, thus the location of the gin well points of the chi meridian. Where the chi flows quickest during transition from external to internal. Feeling the chi brings a sense of of fullness and awareness of self-connection with the universe. And then the chi is the empirical confirmation of the conversion of vital or vitality into chi. All right, so you can take your hand, take your thumb, and press the center of your palm. Or you can clap. Or do like Luka Miyagi. Rub your hands quickly together. Take your hands and feel the tingling sensation. This is the electrical tingling sensation in which that is spoken of. And this is the energy in which that you use in order to heal yourself as well as others. So now, building chi. Once you fill the chi, what begins building up the reservoir of chi, called the yellow coil, located about one and a half inches below the navel and about three inches deep, some say two inches deep, in the, um, the center or the centroid of the self. The centroid is called the lower dantian, where the point chi high and the mean Touch during insulation. What in the chi actually means refining the chi to nurture the spirit. Refinement of chi is the condensation of chi. Condensing chi has the quality of wideness associated with the practice of bone marrow washing. This is practice of breathing the fresh chi into the deepest core, the bone marrow, and exhaling the toxin. Now, this is the simplest way to do it. You send the breathing through the pores of your skin into your bones, and then exhale through the mouth any situation. So it's like this. Okay, that's the simplest way in order to build chi and to rid the body of toxin. Now, moving chi. After enough chi is built up, the chi can be moved. Now, I showed you and taught you um, the 6363-7171 on empty retention breath, which is called pranic breathing. This is how you build up the chi with the pranic breathing technique. Now, let go of the mind. Open the door to the spirit. This is necessary in the process of um, sublimating the chi, the spirit. This is the practice of letting go of the spirit. Refining the spirit into nothingness has an empty quality. This is responding like an echo and adopting or adapting like a shadow. 
once the spirit has been released, an outside reference point can be focused on. This is the practice of crushing the nothingness by making the decision to um, integrate awareness and expand the spirit. This is talking about into your auric field because you have three sections of your auric field. You have your outer auric field, you have your health auric field, and you have your inner auric field. Your inner auric field is about two to six inches off the body. Now, some masters, this could be three to nine to even further. Some masters, outer auric field stretches a mile. All right? So these are the things in which that we want to master. So, this is the decision for, um, to forsake the body and to continue worldly service. So just as expanding the spirit is honest self-expression. In worldly service, moving the chi can be expressed and it transferred the chi from one person to another. This is what the woman did when she was issuing blood and she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And by touching the hem of Jesus' garment, Jesus felt an extraction of energy from him. And he knew that someone touched him, and it was for the purpose of healing. So he turned around and said, who touched me? The woman said, I did, Lord. And then he said, well, woman, you are healed by your own belief, by your own decision of saying to yourself that you was going to be healed. This is the application that can be used in martial arts and healing arts. Same science. Remember, the outer reference point is in your own auric field. So you can take that energy that you have built up and place it into your auric field and to solidify and condense your auric field and seal any leaks and holes in your auric field and to remove any attachments of any negative entities or spirits in which they could have attached themselves to your auric field. Okay, this is the science. So I'm going to leave this information right here. Are there any questions in which that you have? Um, and we'll start back up tomorrow. Um, so yeah, um, the Dantian, right? Right, your Dantian, which is called your lower heaven. Mm -hmm. So the first, uh, the technique that you showed me earlier. Um, it was abdominal breathing, where you would breathe the energy down into your navel, um, belly button area. That is dantian breathing. All right. And, uh, you can go, um, it will expand down to about an inch to two inches below, and then two to three inches um, inside or behind your navel area. Gotcha. This is because your umbilical cord was connected to your mother in the womb. And you was receiving nutrients and food supply, minerals and vitamins from your mother by way of the umbilical cord. Well, since the umbilical cord been broken, you are still supposed to receive energy, but now it's from the cosmos. It's from the universal mother now. Gotcha. Not your physical mother, now the spiritual mother. The, spirit, the spiritual mother, the um, Kutalini Prana, all right, which is the mother goddess principle that is external of us, which is all around us. They're just permeating um, um, all space and time. You're supposed to breathe her in. This is the extraction of the prana or chi or key energy from oxygen. They only tell us about oxygen, but there is a power force behind oxygen. And you are extracting it from the oxygen molecule as you breathe it in. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. And um. So yeah. So I'll be able to go over this, right, Ali? Yeah. Um, um. Like I said, it's being recorded, so I'll send you the recording. Okay. Okay. Um, once it's um is downloaded and everything, I can get it to you. Uh, All right. Uh, sure. Uh, I'll be good. So I remember it for the Dithian, you know, left over right. So that's good. 
and uh, you know, failing to cheat, right? So right. Just like this, lean, you know, I, 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 I'm feeling, you know. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And that's the point of doing the exercises, cause it helps to eliminate toxins, as well as also bring more prana into the body. Um, you can't um, put new wine into old bags, or either they will burst. This is the biblical. Okay, peace out. You sorry about that. All good, brother. Okay, did you have any other questions? No, I'm all good. Uh, you good? Yeah, okay. Good. I'll go over what we what you uh, teach me today. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna be good. Okay. Thank you, bro, man. I appreciate it. All right. You got a little bit of understanding. Got it. I said, you have a better understanding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good, good, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, I, we'll be back tomorrow then. Okay, perfect. All right, peace. Okay, peace.